and I don't know if you guys saw it. It's disgusting. Matt Eberflus, there's a list of things that he did not take accountability for today and frankly doubled down. And today, Tyreek just absolutely, not only did he not hold accountability, he almost doubled down. He's like, I wasn't talking shit to the Washington fans. I was cheering with some Bears fans. He goes, yeah, it's my job to box out Noah Gray on that play, which he's the guy who initially made that touchdown. And I, I saw on online today the prototypical Hail Mary defense of an NFL team. It was the exact play out of a playbook. And it's the bunch man, the jumper, the front man knocked down for the tip, the back man knocked down for the tip. If you notice, there's no knockdown back man because it's Tyreek. And Tyreek goes like, hey, man, you know, I made a play for the ball. And, you know, if ever, if I made it, if I knocked it down, everybody would be saying, hey, great play today, Tyreek. But, you know, it didn't go that way. And so, you know, it's, what happens today is what happens today. So he's basically wow. saying, like, it was a 50-50 chance. No, motherfucker. You didn't do your fucking job, and no one's going to hold you accountable to it because that's not what anybody does on this team. No one holds anyone accountable. Mind you, the head coach himself won't hold himself accountable, won't hold his his uh, coaching staff accountable. He won't play call any players accountable. So, of course, that's the stench. That's the attitude. We talk about arrogance, Paulie, about that weird arrogance that somehow this team feels like it's earned, that Matt Eberflus feels like he's earned. I don't know where he gets this from because he hasn't earned any of it. He's 13 and 27 as a head coach. Way too many games, by the way. That list is an insane total of games you're allowed to coach when your record is that fucking shitty. It, it's too big of a number. And then on top of it, he's not going to say anything because what can he say? He didn't call the timeout. Flus continues to put out choke culture. Guys, 2023 versus Denver, we had a 98% chance in the fourth quarter to win. We lost 2023 against Detroit. We had a 98% chance to win in the fourth quarter. We lost 2023 against Cleveland. We had a 91% chance in the fourth quarter to win. We lost. And here we go. 2024 against Washington. We had a 96 and a half percent chance to win. And we lost. And we talked about repeating mistakes. I talked about my concern um, for, losing games in a certain fashion. If you repeat the same things you did in the past, that's not good. And then another comment he said is this isn't the NCAA. You can't bench him for that. Black Bear, uh, I've seen Bill Belichick bench guys for getting a flag. Black Bear, we've literally seen a team in our own division suspend two players in the last two years that are stars for just being a disrespectful teammate, conduct detrimental to their team. That's how you become a fucking powerhouse. That's how the Packers bench Jair Alexander, the star of their defense. That's oh. how they bench Romeo Dobbs for Thank a healthy you. scratch that, for having guess, fucking attitude problems. Oh. Guess what it did for Romeo Dobbs? He's exactly. fucking playing. Why can't the Bears do it? Vernon so that, Davis. That, can't win with him. You can't win with him. Remember Mike Singletary? <laughs> Calling oh, yeah. out Vernon Davis? I don't want this guy on my team. What happened? It shaped him up, man. It shaped him up. Something clicked in his head. We're like, damn, I'm going to be held accountable for my actions. This Tyreek is how you Stevenson, actually establish a culture. My opinion, um, Matt Eberflus not taking accountability and essentially calling out the players and saying it was their fault for the loss. I don't like that, but it, it unfortunately is the truth. So if he doesn't handle the Tyreek situation with have either benching him saying uh, even if he says you're going to play 50 percent of the snaps we're going to rotate terrell smith in more i think i'd be okay with that but if he just turns a blind eye it's the same thing tyreek plays whatever percentage of snaps he plays that's going to really change my mind on matt eberflus really really quickly what we're saying is the reason he needs to be fired is because he won't bench him which he should do because he doesn't have the job security he doesn't have the confidence he doesn't have the balls or the schematic confidence to do whatever he needs to do to send a message to some fucking players these are players that had a team only meeting or a team meeting with their coaches saying we want to be coached hard this year this is not coaching hard when you let him do this shit you don't call timeouts you let a 15 yard play on on uh on a play before a hail mary that's not coaching hard and then you take no accountability and then you don't bench the guys who fucked it up because you also fucked it up that's that's the definition of why these players are saying we want to be coach hard and why this is why I say this game losing is almost a positive. It puts such an obvious stink in the room that you cannot keep him around next year, regardless of how the season ends, because you're, you're ceiling the floor with Matt Eberflus is probably pretty high because he's a good defensive coordinator, but your ceiling is almost 
you're keeping it right at the same level. Their floor with Matt Eberflus is six wins. Their ceiling is nine. Can you guys see that better? Mm -hmm. So I just want to, for the sake of consistency, say, I mean, October 2nd, 2023, Eberflus deserves to be fired. November 24th, 2023, do the Bears fire Matt Eberflus? Now, it's a little out of order. I think this is our most recent one. Eberflus lacks accountability. What makes Matt Eberflus special? Our answer was, we don't know. Do you trust Matt Eberflus to put together a staff? Is keeping Matt Eberflus a mistake? So, guys, this isn't something that we're just pulling out of our ass here. This is something we've been on for a good good little while that, man, there's a clear upgrade here. And it and the coaching staff, it's so, like David said, arrogant this offseason to not even interview other guys as if you have this all figured out, you just replace had to replace your offensive and defensive coordinators, but everything's fine. I even put out a uh, poll on our YouTube channel saying who's got the worst coaching staff in the NFC North just to make people realize, Oh, the thigh. And I love it. You're shaking your head. No, it, it's such it's an us. obvious answer. It's, it's a us. very obvious us. Yeah. Absolutely. yeah oh no. Sure. I heard a great comment yesterday. The Bears have probably the sixth best head coach in the NFC North. Because Brian Flores, Ben Johnson are also in this in this division. I don't know. The the one thing that, you know, you guys just said what's special about Matt Eberflus, <clears throat> I don't know how many four three schemes there are, especially the way that the Bears run. So I would be very scared of the Bears blowing up their fantastic, you know, downright legendary defense because they want to fire the head coach. Not saying he's a bad defensive coordinator, but as a head coach, you just have way too much on your plate and and you're not getting the job done at the end of the day. And then, Carl, you know, I know initially we had some back and forth right after the game on Twitter. And, you know, right away I told you I'm blaming the head coach because he's the head coach and it is three years in. Like it's time for this to fall on the top domino here. Right. And, you know, I just I want to say, like, let's not pretend like there isn't another coach out there that could get the same production out of the talent that's on the field. Like I always credit and blame the players a lot more than I I do the coaching staff. Like I think a lot of what we're seeing from the defense is because we have good talented players. You went out there and got TJ Edwards, who you knew was a good linebacker. You went out there and got Tremaine Edmonds, Tremaine, Mm -hmm. Tremaine Edmonds, who, you know, who is a good linebacker. You went out there and got Montez Sweat, but what did this defense look like before Montez Sweat? Was Eber Flus this master defensive Coach before that, and no, this is it, where to Carl's he was really point, good. To he kind was of really good go- with Indianapolis and the players who they, they gained confidence and experience. I think that the young players played better. Jaquan Brisker, Kyler Gordon, they got better just with experience. So I don't know. I do agree with your point, but I do think that Eberflus's defense shouldn't just be thrown to the wayside. I think it is a very valuable asset, and the Bears need to figure out how to overcome the rest of it. Carl, but we're I think- throwing it to the wayside right now. What you do you mean? Waste You're wasting a year with it because he's uh, the one coaching this team. Right. You're wasting a that. year so, of golden opportunity of this amazing defense because you are putting a cap, a ceiling on what the team can do this year because you left Matt Eberflus in charge of it. And it while feels I, more like the Bears are going through their rookie quarterback growing pains, and I think unfortunately it's something that was to be expected. And that's and I, it is a bit of a yeah t- double sided coin double uh, double edged thing. Four three defenses are not they're not three four schemes with five linebackers, some crazy schematic thing where guys drop in and out of coverage. This is a this is not an un- impossible defense to figure out. And when you ask like how many defenses and good teams are running this this kind of defense, it's all the good ones. All the good ones can do this consistently when you have that talent. The Eagles run the similar sets. Detroit runs similar set. Buffalo runs similar sets. Uh, not Kansas City necessarily, but because they just shift their lines yeah. so much. But that's Kansas, this isn't Kansas like you City can't and the not Vikings find the ones this. That I like their schemes the most. They have the six on the line. You know, essentially they're saying "fuck you" when they're playing defense, and that's what I like. But Green Bay runs it. That's but that's because you have when you the two teams you just described have two of the greatest defensive coordinators in the game. And they're guys that de- constantly, consistently decline head coaching jobs because they're happy with being the second or first paid, highest paid defensive coordinator in the league. This coaching cycle is significantly better than last year's. And that's really the one positive that you could say to holding on to Eberflus is you're going to not miss out. We were on the boat of let's let's be one step ahead here. 
let's not waste another year. Let's not have a lame duck year. Let's like, this is obviously going to create a wall for the success you're going to have as a team here. Um, let's just do it now. Like I was so adamant about, man, let's, let's not be on this merry-go-round that we've been on where we draft a quarterback and one year later, fire the coach. Let's do it all in one shot. Like I would have loved to have done it all this last off season. Yeah, draft Caleb, like get a new coach, get a new, I mean, that's, I think that would have been a lot more beneficial for this team. Um, but then they started hot. You know what I mean? So, so it's like, okay, so you back off that a little bit, but here we are, they're just showing who they are again. And and I think the biggest key for me this week is that you had two weeks to prepare and it felt mm. exactly like the Titans game. Like we already got our lucky win this year and it was in week one. Right. And you had all off season to prepare for week one. And here we go. You have two weeks to prepare for this and you come out looking like that. Like it's not going to change. I have my Worst seven decisions from that one game, and I power rank them based on what I would feel like you would be fair to saying these are Eberflus, then not so much his fault. Number one, biggest problem he did all game, um, by far, I think the play before didn't matter. That comment, that insane, you, insane you comment. You can call it the final minute. I don't know if that's where you're going, but both both things. He doubled down today and he said, look, so, the, no, the play there's two didn't parts matter. to that. It did. There's two. There's there's yes, but there are such huge, egregious problems. When you say the final minute, it doesn't do justice how many, how many catastrophic mistakes that should have been stopped. Number one is uh, by far more than the Hail Mary, because Hail Marys are just fucking bullshit luck and whatever. Not the play before not mattering. Jaden Daniels with a broken rib is not capable of throwing an 85 yard pass. So for you to be such a fucking dumbass, it's so dumb to say that the 15 yards you gave him to actually complete the Hail Mary did not matter is one of the most insane. It's one of the worst. And I saw it. it's so funny because I was so mad about it before. And then you see ESPN going like it's one of the dumbest things that's ever been said about pro sports ever. Mike Greenberg said this is makes his list of top dumbest things a coach has ever said. I think he I think said he, anybody in humanity. Rex Ryan went off, went off for like nine, ten minutes on just talking about. That, that's his job description, but go on. Yes, but just talking about, you know, and I, I'm not saying that Rex is the best ever, but like he went off on just the execution uh, and the game plan for that Hail Mary. Like, you have T.J. Edwards out there spying him. You didn't call a timeout. You do not need a spy you, on a Hail Mary. No. You do not need it a spy. It doesn't sprout. make any fucking sense. No. Was he going to scramble for 65 yards with a broken rib? The Lions please, please let him try. The play before didn't matter. Polly, you said it to me, too, and I missed it in the moment. Caleb Williams have to, having to pull Matt Eberflus off the field to not Was get, that on uh, the Hail Mary or the play before? The play, play before. before. Play before. Oh, it wasn't Matt the Hail Mary? Caleb walked Williams onto the field. The camera zoomed in on, on, on Caleb Williams as he was on the bench, and he, like, looked sideways. He was like, oh. And then, like, we're going to get a penalty. We're going to get a penalty. And you see Caleb Williams run out there, grab Matt Eberflus, and drag him onto the sideline. So the, situ the, quarterback, was on the, the situational Mary. awareness no, the of your before. rookie quarterback is right. better than your head coach. Within that play. Eberflus not seeing Tyreek Stevenson and failing to call a timeout. Why don't you just call a timeout regardless? So number two. Let them line two, up and then just get a better pick. Not calling from a timeout. timeout. Number yeah, two is not it's calling so a timeout. Bad. It's so bad. It's so So much more egregious. Even if it, everybody was set. And you just didn't like a little bit of something. And you then, can no, still call a timeout the same way on a shot. fucking field goal. Yeah, just, just to get, get a snapshot. snapshot. Same way. And then yeah. let's reset. We see what they're going to do. We see where they're going to line up. They can't change it. It's a Hail Mary. There's no miss. Okay. On, two, on like I, The two guys we had out there, personnel change. On a third down, there was a play that was questionable, that was caught. And I know, Thai, you said that, like, oh, that probably would have been complete. Whatever. It was questionable. What did the commanders do? Don't Rush. be sorry for that. Don't rush up to the line, rush up to the line, try and get the snap off so it can't even be challenged because even they knew, oh, crap. It, it 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 might be, it might not be. It's one of those things. So situationally. But then he gets the challenge wrong because well, listen, they, they called but, it a catch. He'd get but, it wrong but, and then you lose the timeout. And then but you look at the end that. result. You kept all your timeouts. You finished the game with all your timeouts. Good job. 
So like you might have that, needed them. There, there was a I point. Think, well, I, I Matt Eberflus said in his press that, conference he thought if you, you keep all three, you get an extra one next week. What's <laughs> no? That's yeah, what Matt Eberflus maybe thinks. Th- yeah, it's it's very possible. Yeah, the challenges stack like like my T-Mobile minutes, right? Mm-hmm. Number three, which again, this is why we're talking about one minute here. You're saying, Carl, like you almost were like the last minute was really bad. Look how much we can break down personnel on the Hail Mary. Can't blame it. Zach Ertz. Zach, what? Yes, you Montez can. Montez Sweat has been playing through injury. Him not being it's on the, the it's field. The clutch. Buddy, it's the last play of the game. You NFL. just fucking, you ice your shit afterwards. I don't well, care. Break a you leg. Only brought, you only bought three and had a spy. So Montez Sweat or anyone else is not getting through it. Do you team. know who the other pass fine. rusher was on that play, Carl? It was Jacob Martin and um, Austin Booker. And then whoever Why was the f- playing knows and TJ no, Edwards. No Austin Booker. I thought he was. I, I must. It was wrong. Jacob Martin, Demarcus Walker, and Jervon Dexter. That's right. the case, Black Bear. Then fine, respectfully fine. fine. However, even then, you need Austin Booker out there, your fastest defensive end, Austin to catch Booker, up to Jaden Daniels. Just his motor alone. Whether he had one arm, one on leg, a hail he should have been on the field. Austin Booker needs to be out there. Yeah, and um, Darrell Taylor needs to be out there. The two highest motor quickest defensive ends you can throw out there on a Hail Mary to rush the throw. And this is just common fucking sense. And then you have zero, zero players above the height of six feet tall on that jump ball. At that point, honest to God, and I'm not even kidding this as as like a, a cutesy thing, I have no issue if Roma Dunze or Cole Komet being 6'5 and 6'3 respectfully are out there on that play. Cole Komet, I don't know about that. Roma Dunze, I'm fine with that. Guys who can high point the ball for sure, David. Yeah, just that's it. Just high it. point it, slap it down, catch it, whatever. The the personnel, and I'm not exaggerating. I looked at the fucking personnel on that play. I saw five easy fixes of personnel on that. If you really have, want Demarcus Walker in there, put him in at nose. Put him in at nose. Austin Booker and Darrell Taylor need to be out there. Rome should have been out there. You're not about D- to- Elijah Hicks. Elijah Hicks is five foot eleven. Tyreek Hill is six foot even. Jalen Johnson is six foot even. Zach Ertz alone is six foot six. It makes no fucking sense. The personnel choices, and that's again, Carl. I'm picking these based on these are purely and exclusively a Matt Eberflus fuck up. So number four, not challenging the catch in the second quarter. I know they rushed up to the line and snapped that ball quickly. Matt Eberflus has been absolutely mental pretzeled into throwing challenges. Where he yeah, where he's like, flag. oh, we're good on challenges, and, and it's like you're not. Yeah, well, yeah, so what he was got, that? He got roasted. He said, we're great for at it. it. We're he got great at it. For it, and everybody annihilated him for it. And now since then, he hasn't thrown, I think, a single challenge flag. Situationally, you ha- you have to there. It was like a third down catch, and Terry McLaurin clearly caught it off the turf. It was a huge play in the second quarter. It would have at least eliminated three points off the board. And in a close game like this, forget the Doug Kramer shit. Forget all these points matter. Throw a motherfucking flag. And the same way you said it, Polly, you don't get bonus points for keeping all your timeouts. Throw it and see what the fuck happens. Uh, number five, Tyreek Stevenson being matched up at any point on Terry McLaurin. And I said this on the deep ball. You need to shadow Jalen Johnson on Ty- Terry McLaurin because there is no other receiver on that team. If that's the your team game just play, doesn't run that. And I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I can't it be stand your best it. man on your best man. They just play halves. Just like it the can safeties. be done. And I get that. It can be halves and it can be done against certain teams. You can do against Tennessee when Calvin Ridley and DeAndre Hopkins are basically the same guy at this point in their career. You can do it against other teams. You can do it. You can't do it against the Washington Commanders when their only offensive threat is Terry McLaurin. You need to just take it away, shut it down, be flexible. If there is gonna say, no you need to be flexibility in your so, defensive scheme, this is more to support your point, yeah. Carl. You can find any fucking schmuck in the NFL who's a defensive coordinator who runs 4-3 and a modified version of Tampa 2 and fucking cover 2 man. It's not that different. My last two, this is going to be less, I guess, on Matt Eberflus if you want to. Um, I still say this one huge. Doug Kramer getting the ball is still an Eberflus problem. It still is. He gets the veto rights. He can hear it come through the headset and say, whoa, 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 what the fuck are we doing? What the fuck are we doing? What the fuck are we doing? And he can literally veto that shit on third down in a crunch time fourth quarter with three timeouts, as Paulie has pointed out multiple times at this point. And Matt Eberflus has the ability and the absolute right. And if he did it and had the balls to do it, 
and said, guys, guys, time up. He'd be the fucking hero today. But he did it. And my final point, fourth and one, this is probably the least on Matt Eberflus. It's a play that just pissed me off. The short side flare screen to DJ Moore on fourth and one at midfield. It it. pissed me off so fucking badly. It's a fucking flare screen one-on-one to the short side of the field. My thought. The one where he got face masked and nobody said anything. Correct. And DJ Moore got up all pissed off and none of the commentators said anything. And that's fine. And that's fine. It should have been a face mask.